So I ended up getting that ankle swelling, tried all the little remedies and none of those work. So let me tell you what actually worked for me, that your uterus grows 500 times its size during pregnancy. I also had another first time in my life experience. I peed a little from a sneeze, so that's great. Turns out they were completely right about the second trimester. I felt like the clouds just parted, the sun shone on me, and I looked amazing, I felt amazing. That pregnancy glow, like that's a real thing. I mean, it's really just kind of extra oiliness, but it doesn't matter. Just overall 10 out of 10, I would recommend the second trimester. So I wanna go through week by week, the body changes, sensations, thoughts, and feelings. But before we do that, if you're not subscribed to my channel, be sure you're subscribed so you can see more of my videos. We talk about living intentionally, including developing your personal style and home organization, and now pregnancy, and I guess it's just gonna keep expanding. So subscribe to my channel and we can grow together. So as I headed into my second trimester, not only was I recovering from that morning sickness, feeling the nausea all day, the fatigue, the lethargy, but I also ended up with a cold. So I was recovering from that going into the second trimester. And honestly, I didn't have high hopes. I didn't know if my entire pregnancy was going to be that sickly feeling, but luckily that only lasted a few days. And very quickly in the 14th week, I started feeling like my old self again again, just energized, happy, excited to do things, and probably most importantly, less emotionally dramatic, more stable. I spent so much time in the previous months just leaning on friends and family to make me feel like I'm still sane and this is a normal experience to have the ups and downs, that roller coaster of the first trimester. And I think I just needed to learn how to adapt to that and be okay with what it is today. And then we headed into week 15 and I just started feeling so much more aware of how much people had been caring for me for months. I also got a gorgeous haircut. If you've been in a slump for a while and you've just been wearing like leggings and feeling sickly for a couple months, go get a good haircut and a new outfit. I know it's shallow, but it works. It makes you feel so good just like reviving yourself. <laughs> and then week 16 happened. I had to make so many decisions at week 16 and my energy wasn't 100% yet. It was maybe back up to 75%, but those extra decisions, it just was a lot. So I just tried to give myself grace and that's another thing that I think I just really need to learn because I've always been such an overachiever. Just do what you can today and if it doesn't happen, it wasn't important and if it's important, you'll make it happen. And as I was reflecting on that low, I made some mental notes on how to overcome a hormone-driven emotional slump. Number one, have a pity fest and cry it out. Number two, talk with encouraging mama friends. Number three, remind yourself of what's real and what is just like your fluctuating hormones. And number four, build in those activities that keep you emotionally sound. So for me, that is journaling, um, meditation, prayer, yoga, quiet walks on the beach, like all of those things help me to feel more grounded and like I'm processing through all those emotions. So even if I don't like them, I'm okay with them. They can sit there, it's fine. Now to parallel that emotional heaviness, my uterus really started feeling very heavy at the beginning of the second trimester. It feels like it's sitting on my pubic bone and it's pushing all my organs up into my ribs, which is making them ache. But this weird thing happens with pregnancy, I've noticed like you get these new symptoms and they're uncomfortable but it only lasts for a few days or a week. And I don't think it's because they go away necessarily, It's but it's because your body just adjusts to it. And it's all happening for you without you controlling it. I think there's some things that help, obviously. Like I wouldn't be like exercising and eating a good diet if I didn't think those things helped. But I think mostly it's just your body knowing that it needs to make these adjustments and you just have to be patient and allow the days or week to pass so that it can adjust to these changes. I also had some other little aches and pains early in this trimester. I had the round ligament pain 
I think that's pretty common. Um, I haven't had that in several weeks. Lord willing, it stays that way. <laughs> But definitely a few of the yoga poses have helped, like just cat cows. I do that multiple times a day. Slow hip circles, just trying to loosen up that ligament as it's stretching so much. So I learned recently that your uterus grows 500 times its size during pregnancy. Like it's so tiny and it grows into this giant water balloon and those ligaments are holding it in place. Well, those ligaments are used to being quite tiny <laughs> and they get stretched so much. So it's just one of those things that require a lot of tenderness and allowing your body to adjust to those changes. I also had another first time in my life experience. I peed a little from a sneeze, so that's great. And a big thing I noticed this week was um, just how much I've been dreaming. So I'm looking back at my journals and seeing all these different really vivid, crazy kind of dreams that just don't have any sense of reality. But I do have some dreams I kind of like. One of my dreams I wrote down, I had cheesecake ice cream in my dream and it was so delicious, but in reality, food is extra delicious to me right now. So I had this cheesecake ice cream in my dream and the next day I made us drive to the grocery store to get cheesecake ice cream. I couldn't wait, so I sat in the truck and ate it while my husband was just completely dumbfounded by my grace and beauty. Speaking of foods, sour foods are super appealing to me right now. And I know a lot of pregnant women say they like sour candies. I don't like candy. <laughs> so I'm eating like vinegars on salads, sour cream, really tart yogurt, and hot sauce. And that has pretty much continued up until now with no signs of changing. Actually, in week 19, I ended up buying an entire family-sized jar of pickles just for me. Week 19, I started having sleeping problems again. Just from baby moving, it's so startling, especially since it's my first time feeling this. It feels like I'm having an upset stomach and then I just realize it's baby kicking, so I have to calm myself back down to fall asleep again. But even that, I don't wanna be overly positive, but honestly, I'm so grateful, even in the middle of the night when I'm not sleeping because baby's kicking me, Having a miscarriage through my first pregnancy just colors this experience so much for me. I'm so grateful that he's moving and growing and that I get to experience this with him. And so even though I am waking up in the middle of the night, I'm emotionally in a really good place and my mood is stable. And because of all that, I'm also a lot better at making decisions at this point. So I completed my baby registry in one afternoon so that we could have it prepared for the shower. I decided on the stroller, the crib, which spoiler alert is not the crib I got because it got canceled and all the other extra little items. I've been researching all this for about a month and just feeling like I couldn't come to a decision on those really big purchases. But once I got emotionally stable and mentally grounded, it was easy to decide those little things. Also in week 20, I had the anatomy ultrasound and that's when I found out that I have the most perfect baby who's ever existed in all the time aside from Jesus Christ. But really, is that what everybody experiences? You'll have to let me know what part of this you relate to or not down in the comments. Do we know what we're having where you're growing? Oh boy. Okay. All of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, I didn't ask that question. I don't want to like ruin any surprises. I mean, we think it's a boy, so you tell me. Oh yeah. <laughs> it just feels like you get such an intimate view of this baby and how he moves like my little guy did not want to take the photos and it was required for the anatomy ultrasound she had to see all the fingers and toes the nose all the internal organs make sure everything looked healthy and he was burrowing into his placenta so much i told her to turn off the camera i had russell come over and tell him hey look this is how photos go in this family because russell doesn't like photos either and i think this kid takes after him i told him listen, you let him know that the only way the photos end is when we get the right shot. So Russell gave him that pep talk. She turned the camera back on and we got all the shots we needed to confirm that he is a healthy, strong baby boy. 
finally we officially have reached the halfway point of this pregnancy I'm really feeling baby kick so much from those early small flutters to now those very pronounced kicks and I can tell I think when it's a kick versus a punch because the kicks just feel a lot more sharp and the punches feel lighter that's just my interpretation and as this trimester progresses I'm kind of getting confirmation of that the only thing is that at this point Russell had not felt baby move and I've been feeling baby move for about two months so I asked her if there was anything that we could do and she said this might not work but you could try having Russell sing to him at night and see if he responds to that so we tried it that night and it was the first time that Russell felt baby move I think that finally gave him this real feeling of connection with this baby. We started going to the beach every morning and walking before it gets too hot here. And that has just been such a grounding part of my day. Okay, week 21, I finally started looking at some maternity clothes. I tried on a bunch of things. I'll probably do a whole separate video on maternity clothes, but so far I haven't bought anything because nothing is that cute. And I'm thinking, do I really want to spend a lot of money on clothes that I'm only going to be wearing for a couple or three months? No. So instead, I've just been wearing larger sizes and especially just certain types of clothes that are more stretchy and I don't know if I'll end up buying maternity clothes but I did do a whole try on and all my maternity fails and I would love to edit that footage and just point out why it doesn't look good and how we can make it look better and what I'm doing instead of buying a maternity wardrobe. So if you're interested in that make sure you are subscribed to my channel because that'll be out in a few weeks. Now we're into the six month of pregnancy and I'm using this month to focus on how to have a healthy pregnancy and a labor and birth experience. So there are four things that I'm doing to educate myself. Number one, watching YouTube videos, of course. Number two, I bought Bridget Tyler's Built to Birth course and that has just been super illuminating. Like things that you wouldn't be able to get on short videos from YouTube. It's so well structured and it's really easy to follow. Number three, my doula is doing a monthly educational session with Russell and me where she's setting the expectations of what labor and birth are going to be like and how she and Russell and I can all work together to have an optimal experience. And number four, I have a monthly appointment with the midwife and I'm jotting down all my notes throughout the month that are health and medical specific questions so that I can ask her. And those appointments are like an hour long. So it's very thorough. I get to ask all my questions, get very thorough answers and even ask follow-up questions if I don't understand. If you think about it, birth is likely the most physically taxing event of a woman's life. But if we don't learn about it ahead of time, it's like if someone just showed up to the Olympics and tried to do a high dive. With birth, I think there's so much fear around the unknowns and it might seem easier to just close your eyes and let someone else tell you what to do. But I think really it's such an intuitive experience. It's something that is your own. It's your personal experience and your body, your mind, your intuition, they're trying to lead you to optimize that experience. So the more you can understand of what it's trying to tell you, then the better experience you're going to have. And since I want to have several children, I want to educate myself as much as possible for this first experience so that it just goes as smooth as possible and I can fulfill this opportunity to bring my baby into the world in the healthiest way possible. Now for something really fun. Our stroller finally came in and I just thought it was such a fun little toy to play with. I've never really been responsible for a stroller. I've worked in daycares, nurseries, day camps with children, but I've never actually been responsible for a newborn off property. So I was playing with this stroller and I took it around town, which made my husband think I was absolutely crazy, but Luckily, he loves me so much, he obliges me. And um, I learned during that time that it's actually a lot more work than it looks, especially if it's your first time doing it. I bang that stroller around so much that I just know I need more practice before I put my newborn into it. So I'm probably going to take it out around town a couple times more and Russell will just have to deal with it. And speaking of stuff, I bought a mama necklace this week because this is the pendant that I usually wear, but I'm thinking when I breastfeed, like I don't want my hair and this necklace in my baby's face. So I bought a little choker that's super pretty that I can sleep in and bathe in. And I tried explaining to my husband that I need like mama things. 
and he doesn't understand, but he's supportive. <laughs> I also tried on some Birkenstocks because those are the natural mama shoes around here, and I definitely see why sliding into them is easier than putting on the straps of my shoes now that I have a big belly, but I haven't bit the bullet. I'm not sure if I like those or a different brand, so we shall see. I'll definitely be getting some mama shoes soon. Now to round out this trimester, I had two of the best experiences of my life, my baby shower and my girlfriend's trip. So first was my baby shower in South Carolina, and it was thrown by Russell's grandmother and his two aunts up there who were close with. And it was just such a beautiful time I don't typically love being the center of attention, but I knew it was my time to let people cherish me and love me. And it just felt really good and heartwarming and connective to all these other mamas and women who support me. But you know how I said it was in South Carolina? It was so hot. It's hotter in the South than it is in Florida during the summer. So I ended up getting that ankle swelling. Um, the technical term is edema, but Anyway, I ended up getting that because not only was it hot, but I was also drinking sweet tea and lemonade all weekend instead of my normal electrolyte water. So I tried all the little remedies that I read online, like elevate your legs, ice your ankles, drink more water, and none of those worked. So let me tell you what actually worked for me. I think what was going on is that I had too much water without salt. So I added electrolytes and salt back into my water, and the next morning I woke up, my ankles were normal. But it was pretty freaky having ankles that swelled up so quickly. And lastly, my closest girlfriends of 20 years now came and visited. Every time one of us has a baby, we visit. Every summer, we visit each other. But this is the first time they got to experience my life in Florida. And I think they loved it. I mean, who wouldn't? Like, I live near the beach. It was just such a beautiful, intimate experience. I don't even know if I can put it into words. I'm kind of getting choked up here. But um, one of my friends, who is a science teacher, did something really fun and gave baby boy his first science lesson on moon phases. But it doesn't make its own light. You can see it because it reflects the sun's light. It don't ever really look the same. Eight different phases and they all have names. If you want to know why, there. then listen. Oh. It depends <laughs> on the moon's position. We had a wonderful weekend and between that and the baby shower, that's what I really wanted with this pregnancy. These real experiences and authentic moments with intimate connection with people I love. All of that made for such a beautiful second trimester and now we're in our third. So I'll give you a recap on how that goes in a few months. Now, before you go, I would love to hear what experiences you relate to. Let me know down in the comments. I'll see you next week in a brand new video, but until then, take care.